A very good evening. You're watching Primetime News here on TV1, coming to you live and direct from the News First Studios here in Colombo. For the News First team, I am Ruha Zerupan. Before we move on with our bulletin, here's a look at your headlines. Shehan Karnathilaka bags 2022 Booker Prize in big win for Sri Lankan literature. The winner of the 2022 Booker Prize is the seven moons of Mani Almeida. Me pota mang Ogland aliuwe meka dinu mak rata paraje vela inna kaale ka meka dinu. A clinical bowling display helps Sri Lanka crush UAE. The Petroleum Products Special Provisions Bill passed. Police obstruct IUSF protest march against suppression. Now on to your top story this evening. Sri Lankan writer Shehan Karuna Tilaka won the prestigious Booker Prize for fiction on Monday for the seven moons of Mali Almeida, a satirical afterlife north set during Sri Lanka's brutal civil war. The winner of the 2022 Booker Prize is the seven moons of Mali Almeida. Shehan Karnathilaka, one of Sri Lanka's leading authors, won the prestigious Booker Prize and the £50,000 award for his second novel, The Seven Moons of Mali Almeida. Of the £50,000 2022 Booker Prize for fiction. The 47-year-old, who has also written journalism, children's books, screenplays and rock songs, is the second Sri Lankan-born Booker Prize winner after Michael Ondaatje, who took the trophy in 1992 for The English Patient. Karnathilika received the award from Camilla, Britain's Queen Consort, during a ceremony at London's Roundhouse Concert Hall. The judges' unanimous choice, The Seven Moons of Mali Almeida, is the darkly humorous story about a murdered war photographer investigating his death and trying to ensure his life's legacy. The event was the first fully in-person booker ceremony since the pre-pandemic event in 2019 and the first for long-time literacy champion, Camilla, since her husband became King Charles III last month after the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II. My, my hope for Seven Moons is this. Yes. Um, that in the not too distant future, 10 years or as long as it takes, that it is read in a Sri Lanka that has understood that these ideas of corruption and race baiting and cronyism have not worked and will never work. It is read in a Sri Lanka, well I hope it's in print in 10 years, but if it is, I hope it's read in a Sri Lanka that learns from its stories and that Seven Moons will be in the fantasy section of the bookshop and will not be mistaken next to the dragons and unicorns, will not be mistaken for realism or political satire. But let me just finally just say to the people of Sri Lanka, this is all I want to say. Me potter mang ogalan taliuwe, meka dinumak rata paraje vela inna kaale ka meka dinumak langa di api nemi mita para dunna kamak na. Ada langka min sunga duk pindena, e duk midin na mata ayu dunna. Eight may jaya grane api piligamu, bang api komari lok T20 kusalane dinagamu ay beri. Ilange sondangale emades khade halay kurvom gure konde irupom. Thank you, Stuti Jayaveva Nandri. Fantastic. Thank Shehan Karuna Tilaka. Congratulations, the winner of the 2022 Book of... Shehan Karnathilaka is one of Sri Lanka's foremost authors. In addition to his novels, he has written rock songs, screenplays and travel stories. He emerged onto the global literary stage in 2011 when he won the Commonwealth Book Prize, the DSL and Gratian Prize for his debut novel, Chinaman. The book was declared the second best cricket book of all time by Wisden. Born in Gaul, Sri Lanka in 1975, Karnathilika grew up in Colombo, studied in New Zealand and has lived and worked in London, Amsterdam and Singapore. He currently lives in Sri Lanka. His work has been published in Rolling Stone, GQ and National Geographic. He has worked as an advertising copywriter and played guitar in a band called Independent Square. 
In 1992, Michael Ondaatje won the award for the English patient, becoming the first Sri Lankan born to win the prestigious award. Sri Lankan novelist Anuk Arudh Pragasam's A Passage North was shortlisted for the Booker Prize 2021. It is extremely significant for Sri Lanka as two of its authors were shortlisted for the Booker Prize in two back-to-back -back years. Sri Lankan award-winning writer Shehan Karnatalika spoke exclusively to News First Jayama Ratnayaka about his win. Well, it's it is a long process. I've been writing this for about seven years, and uh, it uh, took many forms. Mm. My my thought process was simply this: it was during 2010, 2011, 2012, the, the after the post-war period, and I remember we were all. grateful and relieved that the war had ended but mm. there was a lot of controversy over how it had ended i can't make sense of what's happening now but i can take this idea and look at our past i mean sadly there are so many periods in our past where you can look at where people have died and there's been no explanation or no no one prosecuted for it i think if you look beyond all the things in the book it's really a very simple question do we dig up our past and face it and learn from it or do we bury it and forget about it we we've had a 30 year war you would think that would end the idea of a sri lanka based on many races i you think that that would foster unified sri lanka but still years after the war we're still involved in the same mistakes of the baiting minorities and uh, and and peddling this this idea that sri lanka belongs to some people it doesn't belong to other people you know i just wanted to say that i i would like a sri lanka that that doesn't make the same mistakes over and over and over again and uh, these ideas that i brought up some of them race baiting corruption cronyism they haven't worked for sri lanka let's face it they have not worked i would like to see people below 40 people in their 30s and their 20s young people who don't have these dated ideas hmm. who can embrace the idea that this is one sri lanka and it, this book i wrote it i wrote about what seven or eight drafts you, you don't give up you know that each time you Prove it's going to get better. Mm. But I want more and more Sri Lankans to write and tell our stories. For the full interview with award-winning writer Shehan Karnatilaka, visit our social media platforms. Moving on, a clinical bowling display helped Sri Lanka crush UAE by 79 runs in the ICC T20 World Cup in Australia. Sri Lanka's amazing show gives them a significant boost in a group where net run rate would likely play in a role by the end. The UAE won the toss and invited Sri Lanka to take first lease of the wicket in Geelong. The opening partnership worth 42 runs between Pathum Nisanka and Kusal Mendis got In the 5th over, Shanaka's men were the happier side at the end of the power play with 50 runs. This was followed by a 50 run stand between Dhananjay De Silva and Nisanka. The all-rounder was the aggressor between the two, smashing a 21 ball 33 consisting of innings to a premature end Karthik Mayappan made history against Sri Lanka when he became the first player to claim a hat-trick for UAE in T20s it was also the first hat-trick of the tournament Sri Lanka were cruising along when Mayappan came into bowl in the 15th over with Pathum Nisanka and Bhanuka Rajapaksa at the crease that over turned the game on its head as it triggered a middle order collapse putting the pressure back on Sri Lanka Nisanka who got to his 50 in the same over as the hat-trick got a move on and helped sri lanka post a competitive total a blinder from basil hamid brought an end to his innings where he scored almost half of sri lanka's team total Three of UAE's first four victims were cleaned up as Dushmanta Samira and Pramod Madushan put on an exhibition of fast bowling, swinging and seaming the new ball around. Under the lights, UAE struggled to get going, losing four wickets inside the power play to be reduced to 21 for four. Out. Another wicket. Vanindu Hasaranga came on to pile on UAE's woes. and the scorecard soon read 42 for 7 in 12 overs with sri lanka eyeing a huge win bowling uae out for 73 runs sri lanka romped home to a 79 run victory
Huge from Sri Lanka's point of view going forward. They set up. News first Senator Sena Naika gives us a brief on the Netherlands Namibia encounter. A sensational victory for Sri Lanka against the United Arab Emirates. Mind you, this is the same team that was beaten by Namibia a few days ago. However, today we saw the other side of the coin. Sri Lanka, as expected after their success at the Asia Cup tournament, proved that they are not who they are, who they were against Namibia. Pick up the bowlers, Dushmanta Chamira, after a prolonged break following an ankle injury was truly back with a sensational performance. Let's not forget Patam Nisanka's heroics with the bat on a tough wicket. All in all, it was a complete performance by Sri Lanka. Now, for the Sri Lankan side, the next stop is a match against the Netherlands. A victory against the Dutch is decisive in securing a position in the Super 12. Bringing you the latest updates on the developments of the T20 World Cup, from Stein Studios, Ratmalana, I'm Senator Sena Naika. Journalist Azam Amin joins us with an update on the injury of Dushman Tachamira. After winning the match against the UAE, the Sri Lankan coach Chris Silverwood joined a media briefing today. One of the main concerns raised by journalists during this media briefing was the injury suffered by Sri Lankan Pesi Dushmanta Chamira. He couldn't give a clear clarification on the injury. He said that there is some injury and he is currently under medical observation. He said he will make a clarification on this soon. South Asia's fastest man and Commonwealth bronze medalist Yupun Abekon returned to Sri Lanka on Tuesday morning. Sri Lankan sprinter Yupun Abekon won bronze in the men's 100 meters at the Commonwealth Games, clocking a time of 10.14 seconds. The first Asian to win a Commonwealth Games medal in the event, Abekon, was only 0.01 seconds behind Olympic Games finalist Akani Simbine of South Africa, who took silver. He is currently ranked 20th in the world rankings, and this is the first time he visited Sri Lanka following the conclusion of the Commonwealth Games. <laughs> I was able to win many titles this year. I was able to put Sri Lanka in the 167th rank in the world rankings. I'm happy that I was able to break many records this year. I'm currently speaking with the sports minister to make ways for other athletes in Sri Lanka to engage in athletics in a professional level and how to properly conduct it as a profession. More news will come your way after this short commercial break. Stay tuned. News first. Main sponsor. 25% for two months. 25.5% for four months. Valuable FD. 25% for two months. 25.5% for four months. Valuable FD. Welcome back to the news. Sri Lanka Police and the Inter-University Students Federation were engaged in a standoff on Tuesday. The standoff took place when the police decided to block the Colombo Candy Main Road to prevent a protest march from proceeding from the University of Kalania, citing that six hours prior approval was not obtained. Police said that eight people were arrested following the protest. The Inter-University Students' Federation launched their protest march against oppression on a rainy Tuesday afternoon. They demanded the release of the two student activists who are being held under the Prevention of Terrorism Act. They also emphasized to stop the repression immediately. But when the police informed that the march could not be allowed because permission was not obtained six hours prior, a heated situation arose. The police said that we closed the roads, but when we looked at the reason for the traffic jam, it was clear that the police had closed the roads. 
Then, as the students moved closer towards Colombo, the police announced to disperse immediately. <laughs> The group protesting on the road in front of the university later attempted to proceed forward once more. There, the police announced to disperse for a second time and several people were arrested. A heated situation arose once more when a couple riding on a motorcycle on the road claimed to have shown support to the students. However, the students did not attempt to continue with today's march and dispersed after student activists addressed the gathering in front of the Kalania University. A complaint filed by the Young Journalists Association against the arrests made by police at a peaceful commemoration event at Golface Green on the 9th of October was taken up at the Human Rights Commission on Tuesday. Golface Pitania Podu Kateut Sandha Bhavita Kiri Madati Istana. We informed the Human Rights Commission that Golface Green is a public place. This is a site where people can go out and relax. It's also a place where people can gather and protest. On the 9th of October, around 200 people gathered here. They were engaged in a peaceful demonstration. They did not break any law there. But the police did some unwanted intervention, which resulted in an unrest. We showed the commission that even the arrests made by police are illegal. The police is doing all these to scare off the people. They once warned the people that they will arrest them if they get involved in any rally. But this actually was not a rally. They arrested these people while they were engaged in a peaceful demonstration. This is illegal. The constitution has granted these rights to the people. They have a right to enjoy these rights. According to Article 4D of the constitution, these law enforcement agencies have a duty to ensure these rights. We hope that the Human Rights Commission will give a clear direction with regard to the manner in which the police acted during these protests. <laughs> Petroleum trade unions decided to report sick on Tuesday to protest against the Petroleum Products Special Provisions Amendment Bill that was presented to Parliament. The Podujana Progressive Workers Union connected to the SLPP protest near the entrance to the Parliament. Petroleum trade unions decided to report sick today and this heavily impacted the distribution of petroleum products in the country. News First correspondents reported that there was no movement from the Kolonawa, Muturajavala and Sapukaskanda terminals today morning. Sipet co-filling stations were closed in some parts of the island due to the non-availability of fuel. Queues were also seen at Lanka IOC and Sipet co-filling stations where fuel was available. <laughs>
मैं पानता संबंध उन्हों खाने जाते हैं लीजिए। Lawyers pass the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation and the CPSTL will be extinct. This law will destroy the petroleum corporation forever. The minister did not give us a chance for a discussion about this matter. अभी साक्षात चावक का दूर नहीं है। बारो सेशन दिखाने। This minister brings this special provision bill disregarding the Supreme Court when there are two cases in the Supreme Court already. There will be few queues in this country again by the day after tomorrow. We apologize to the people of this country. It's not the petroleum workers who should be held responsible for this. It is the stubborn minister and the government that is responsible for this. The Petroleum Products Special Provisions Bill was passed in Parliament on Tuesday with amendments. Accordingly, 77 votes were received in favour of the bill and only 17 votes were received against. The vote was held after MP Vijita Herat of the National People's Power requested for one. The Petroleum Products Special Provisions Bill was published via Gazette on the 12th of August 2022 to amend certain sections of the Petroleum Products Special Provisions Act No. 33 of 2002. The bill was prepared after the Cabinet of Ministers granted its approval to issue licenses to selected specific sectors of the economy to import and to use the fuel they require individually. The bill was included into the Parliament agenda on the 31st of August this year and it proposed several key amendments to the Act. It proposes to award the Cabinet-appointed Energy Supply Committee with the powers relating to the petroleum. The committee shall consist of the Secretary to the Ministry of the Minister signed the subject of petroleum, Secretary to the Treasury or his nominee, not below the rank of Director General of the Treasury, Chairman or Managing Director of the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, and two members appointed from among persons who have achieved eminence in the field of petroleum industry or law. However, following an examination of petitions filed challenging the bill, the Supreme Court determined that a special majority was necessary to pass the provisions on considering the decision made earlier as the decision taken by the new committee and to enact the decisions taken by the Energy Supply Committee before the bill was passed. The Supreme Court also determined that several other articles required a referendum. The Podujana Perumunas Trade Union, the Petroleum Progressive Workers Union, gathered at the poll to a junction to the parliament entrance, urging the MPs not to act in favour of the bill. For the Janu Perumunas Trade Union, the Petroleum Progressive Workers Union gathered at the Poldua Junction leading to the Parliament entrance, urging the MPs not to act in favour of the bill. <laughs> Energy Minister Kanchana Vijay Sekra is trying to commit the biggest betrayal in history. Last July, the profit of the Petroleum Corporation was 6.31 billion rupees, and in August, the profit was more than 2 billion rupees, and in September, the profit was more than 5 billion rupees. So, why does the Petroleum Corporation need to be privatized? Don't support this law and be a part of the biggest betrayal in history. We will never back down, even to send the government home. We say to the MPs of the government that we represent and to all the MPs in the parliament. Don't forget that this is the decisive moment that will decide your political fate tomorrow. The energy minister has reached the point where he is acting like President Rani Vikram Singh's son, selling things. We will see as to who supports this dirty decision and we will step into a struggle to send them home. The fuel distribution was normalized by this afternoon. We propose that by amending this act, provisions will be made to allow several international suppliers to import and distribute fuel to the country. The Supreme Court suggested several changes to the act. We are tabling this act today after amending this act as per the suggestions. These trade union leaders do not represent the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation anymore. Even last night they claimed that they will interrupt the distribution of fuel in the country by reporting sick. This is a threat made at the government. These threats are made by terrorist organizations.
We don't have any intention of removing any employee, but we believe that we should make changes in the recruitment process. 24 suppliers, both internationally and locally, have come forward to supply fuel to the country. After filtering these suppliers, we hope that there will be more fuel suppliers in the country apart from the LIOC and CIPETCO. This will only be enforced if this bill is passed today in Parliament. How did you call them before the bill gets passed in the Parliament? According to this bill, calling for tenders for this purpose should not be carried out through the committee appointed by this bill. We have called for an expression of interest. We have considered the suggestions made by the Supreme Court as well. And these amendments are being made according to these suggestions. Anyone can challenge this in court. It is only today we are approving the procedure. How can you call for expressions of interest before that? We have considered the matter raised by you. This is why we have taken advice from the Attorney General in amending this bill. Section 7 of this bill suggests to remove all prior agreements. It states that the legality of this will be affirmed once the new bill is passed. They are doing this to cover up the mistakes made by them in the past. We have a serious suspicion that this act will be used as a blanket to evade the law being enforced on these mistakes. Which means you try to include it but did not work. As the Samagi Janabalavege, we believe that this committee should be an independent one. If you can delegate this power to the Public Utilities Commission through amending the Public Utilities Commission Act, as the Samagi Janabalavege, we will render our support to you. If not, we are not ready to let you make these changes according to your own whims and fancies. According to Section 7 of this bill, when a new committee replaces the previous one, it is a standard policy followed by the legal draftsman to include this provision. The legal draftsman has included this after consulting the Attorney General. This was not included by the government. But after the Supreme Court made a determination on this, we removed it from the bill. That was just one person among millions living in rural Sri Lanka who have been left helpless. The government, the door-to-door -door team walking the length and breadth of Sri Lanka came across many people who were battered by multiple issues. These are the cries of a child in Telugunagar, Thambalagamua in Trinkamali. Her name is Archana. The gum at the door-to-door -door team came across her home during the visit to the Trinkamali district. Many villagers in the Telugunagar in Trinkamali have been battered by the economic crisis. Anand Kumar is another person who is battling through his life amidst the prevailing economic crisis. Anand Kumar is a shoemaker. His wife is bedridden. After losing his son, Anand Kumar took on the responsibility of bringing up the grandchildren. Anand Kumar's granddaughter is the one who wants assistance to go to school. This is just one story and not the only story of economic hardships that have battered rural Sri Lanka. The Gamma at the door to door teams who visited the Hamantara district came across many issues faced by the people. 125 families live in the Gotamigama village, which is located in the boundaries of the Hamantara and Monaragala districts. The main issue these people face is the lack of access to clean drinking water. <laughs> Many of these villagers are daily wage earners. Even still, they find it difficult to find a living since there is no one to hire them and they lack water for their cultivations as well. Our teams visiting Dodo -do in Kurunagala district today went to many villagers in the Galgamu Divisional Secretariat as well as Ridigama Divisional Secretariat. It was during this time they discovered the village of Balavatthala. The main problem these villagers face is the absence of a bridge. The bridge that was there two years ago has been removed, promising a new bridge within three months. 
fought. The village is left with no bridge at all. The villagers are currently traveling through a temporary road, which is very risky. Japan is ready to organize a Sri Lanka creditors meeting over the island nation's debt crisis. The Yomiuri Shinbun reported that Japan is working to organize a meeting of Sri Lanka's creditors by the end of this year in hopes of solving the country's debt crisis. The meeting, which will discuss finding ways to reduce debt payments, aims to curb China's influence by helping Sri Lanka cope with its so-called debt traps, which arose after China provided huge loans to the country to fund infrastructure developments and other projects. The meeting is expected to focus on measures to reduce debt payments and postpone repayment deadlines, among other related steps. Japan continues to urge other creditor countries to play a proactive role in dealing with the issue. The appropriation bill for the year 2023 was presented to Parliament on Tuesday. The total expenditure for 2023 for the government is over 7.87 trillion rupees. The total recurrent expenditure for 2023 is 4.634 trillion rupees. Alliance share is set aside for the Ministry of Public Administration, Home Affairs, Provincial Councils and Local Government, which is 856 billion rupees. 613 billion rupees has been allocated to the Finance Ministry, which includes debt service cost. The Ministry of Defence has been allocated 410 billion rupees. Jayagamu Sri Lanka Our boys will face the world at the T20 World Cup starting Sunday. Would you like to send Team Sri Lanka your wishes? Here is your chance. WhatsApp a 30 second clip of your creative wish to 0777 6020 and end your wish with Jayagamu Sri Lanka. We will show Sri Lanka and the world how Sri Lankans support Sri Lanka. Jayagamu Sri Lanka. Let's now cross over to a short commercial break. Stay tuned. Why can't we tighten up the whole process of cope. Our law enforcement must be taken out of politics. That social contract clearly has been in favor of those who are ruling. Do you think this will uh, play a role in Japan coming forward to support Sri Lanka more in the future? A strong message, hopefully, that will echo throughout generations to come. Very good evening to you and welcome to Newsline Live. Newsline, weekdays at 8.30 p.m. on TV1. Eight people were arrested following the protest held in front of Kalini University by the Inter-University Students' Union. Police spokesperson SSP Nihal Taldwa stated that they were arrested on the charges of not obtaining permission for the protest six hours prior. We now have news first, Ravindra Jayakodi with more details. Ravindra Jayakodi will join us in a short while. What you just witnessed was Real Madrid forward Karim Benzema has won the prestigious Bellen Dior Award for the first time in his career, edging out Robert Lewanski, Suad Mann and Kevin De Bruyne for the top football prize. Moving on, eight people were arrested following the protest held in front of the Kalinia University by the Inter-University Students' Union. Police spokesperson SSP Nihal Taldua stated that they were arrested on charges of not obtaining permission for the protest six hours prior. We now have news first, Ravina Jayakodi. Now, several members who took part in the protest organized by the Inter-University Students' Federation near the Kalani University were taken into police custody today evening. Right now, I am at the Batal police station where these protesters are held in custody by police. You can see several members of the legal fraternity and other members of the Inter-University Students' Federation present here, awaiting for a confirmation from the side of the police on the charges leveled against these protesters and to know whether these protesters will be released tonight on police bail or they will be kept in custody until tomorrow, until they are produced to a magistrate tomorrow. Uh, this update we have right here. Stay tuned to News First as we bring you the latest of this incident. For the News First team, I am Ravindra Jayakodi reporting to you from Vattala. 
And that's our for prime time news here on TV1 for the News First team. I'm Lazer Farm. Thanks for watching and good night.